much more most so much mm -hmm. is the positive degree more is the comparative of much so if you're putting much uh, more here you're adding two comparative adjectives okay. so this is double comparative so i'm also a writer i compose poems and currently i'm working on a collection of short stories in the novel as well uh, communication is established so one of the plays where the link is broken the communication is not established if we are um, struggling with certain uh, sounds so what can we do to improve our pronunciation so good afternoon. so first session together sir good afternoon Okay. Well, is this is our first session together i think there's a delay in the relay uh, yes ma'am a little bit okay no problem so how was your sunday sara so far yeah it is good my sundays are quite busy yes yeah all right great yeah. okay so what do you do are you working or are you a homemaker okay ma'am by profession i'm a teacher as well as i'm a tutor I used to teach mm -hmm. in schools, but now I have my coaching. Yes. You have your own coaching centers? Yes, ma'am. Good. So good. All right. So what do you teach? What do I teach? Uh, up to 10th standard, I teach all the subjects. And uh, it's been a couple of months now I've started taking English sessions as well. Yes, ma'am. Online. You're taking English classes also? Yes, ma'am. Great. Wonderful. That's really awesome. Do you get a lot of students online? Uh, sorry, ma'am. Do you get a lot of students online? Uh, yes, ma'am. Great. Okay. So, how is your class? How are your classes going on? Are you happy with it? Yes, ma'am. I am just enjoying whatever I'm doing now. Yes, I'm enjoying a lot. Actually, okay. I used to go into schools and institutions. I used to teach there. But mm. ever since I have encountered this what I'm doing now, I'm enjoying this a lot now. Yes. So okay. I like to school and all. Yes, ma'am. All right. So you like online teaching uh, as yes. compared to offline teaching? Exactly. Yes, Do you face any challenges when you're teaching online? Uh, no, ma'am. I'm not. Uh, as like I've just started, as I mentioned, uh, recently I've just started. It's been a couple of months. And I'm just enjoying uh, Yes, if it comes to challenges, as uh, it's new for me, so a lot mm. of things, and I believe I'm learning in the process. And these are challenges. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, online, as in connectivity issues, internet issues, either you can have or your students can have. Do you face such ordeals? Yes, ma'am. I believe these are somewhere normal. Yes, we, we do. We do face these issues. Yes, ma'am. How long is your class? Is it one hour or just uh, 40 minutes? Okay, ma'am, there are a couple of slots, like some sessions I take for 30 minutes, some for 45 minutes, and last for last, I take one hour, not more than that. All right. This is for regular students or just or spoken English? Uh, for spoken English, ma'am. 30 minutes and 45? Yeah, and last one hour. One hour. So what motivated you, if you yourself are a teacher, what motivated you to join us here at English Yari? <laughs> okay, ma'am. Somewhere I believe it's okay. I'm in the process. I'm learning, but yeah. I believe the tutor. And yeah. I watched a lot of videos, and I was amazed. I believe somewhere you have put thousands of hours learning something which we are learning now. Mm. So that would be more better if we can get some guidance. Yeah. So yes. you want guidance in teaching, coaching? Um. Yes, ma'am. Little bit. Yeah. What else are you looking to improve here? Like, okay. Yeah. Okay, ma'am. Uh, by the way, there are a lot of questions in my mind about things, about pronunciation, about mm. learning tips. Yes. Okay. Great. Yeah. Shoot. Shoot at me. <laughs> I'm available. Don't worry. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So great. Well, first, I'm quite excited to know about you. You want to know more about me? Yeah, you haven't introduced yourself also. <laughs> so, yeah, I just uh, I just asked the questions because I presume you have been through sessions before. I think this is your first session on English, Yari. Yes, ma'am. First session. Okay, then can you formally just introduce yourself? I know your name is Sarah and I know you're a teacher as well. So I would like to know a little bit about your hobbies or your educational qualification where you're residing. That's all. Okay, ma'am. All right, so I am from Uttarakhand, Dehradun. 
Mm. And as you were really by, by profession, I'm a teacher. If it comes to my hobbies, ever since I have encountered this language now, my hobby is hobbies are attached to this language only. I mm. love reading. I love writing. I just jot out, <laughs> I jot down a lot of things. This is what I enjoy. And I speak to people. I teach. This is my hobby. Let me tell something about my pro qualifications. So I have completed my BCA, Bachelor of Computer Application, and then BA in MIT. Yes, ma'am. In computers? Uh, yes, ma'am. Wow. Computer expert and an English, uh, <laughs> you, know, in, uh, you know, coach. Good. Wonderful. Yes. So, uh, ma'am, yeah. I have noticed one thing as like, degrees i have collected you know this computers and all but i don't think so i'm very good at it because I, i'm not giving my inner energy my time into it because i believe i'm not good th with this technology and all i can be more better with this uh communication yeah right. but if we combine these two technology and uh, you know english then it okay. could be more better for me yes okay before i just move on let me just uh, make a small note of something you said and you repeated that more better like more is already a comparative adjective and yes. better is also a comparative adjective and so um i would do better or much better oh okay why I do better or much better oh yes why because better is already a comparative adjective of good so if yes. you want to if you were so insistent on fixing a prefix for it use mm -hmm. a positive degree of comparison rather than another comparative degree of comparison. Okay. Like much more most, much more most. So much mm -hmm. is the positive degree, more is the comparative of much. So if you're putting much uh, more here, you're adding two comparative adjectives. Okay. So it's mm -hmm. double comparative. So try to avoid that. Okay. Okay. okay moving on to my I introduction. Okay. All right. Okay. Better much better. better or she is how is she feeling she's much better she's much better okay, okay. i i would do, yeah i would do more i would i feel i would do much better in english coaching rather than in computer applications mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Yeah. so uh you know my name hazel and i've been teaching english language and literature for 20 years and over these years i've gathered a lot of tips and tricks with which i can help you overcome your audience challenges uh, that you're facing. I'm a mother of two children. Currently, I'm residing in my hometown, which is in Kerala. I've got lots of hobbies. I am an avid reader and uh, I'm also a writer. I compose poems and currently I'm working on a collection of short stories and a novel as well. I'm a painter. I do oil and acry acrylic on canvas. I do glass painting, fabric painting. I'm also into clay modeling as well. I am also a musician. I play three instruments and I sing as well. So I think I just about summed up all of it. So this is all about me. Wow, right? glad to hear about the jack of all trades. A lot uh, of things. Yeah. Well, the hobbies, just nurture it so that, you know, I don't lose touch with my child, the child in me, that is. Oh, wow. Okay. It's very interesting. Yeah. So you had you said you had some questions. Can you shoot your questions and then we'll move on to the session, Doc? This is how our platform works. We have a topic. Uh, you can check the topic before you join the session if you like to and come prepared, or you can just about join the session and then look through it and discover what is in store. Before that, I normally take up doubts and uh, clarify them and then move on. So what did you have to ask? Okay, uh, so there is a query and uh, I've seen a lot of people asking this. So first thing, uh, this pronunciation and accents. Mm. So I have heard, even I suggest the very same thing. Um, we can work upon accents. Accents can be choice, but pronunciation is must. So like, are you satisfied with this statement, ma'am? And can you give me some suggestion here? Yes, yeah. pronunciation is absolutely a must. Because uh, I face learners here and I see the difficulty of, um, you know, unclear pronunciations. I do not get what they're saying. Do you get it? First of all, this is a radio transmission. You do know that. So radio transmissions, the clarity is actually very temperamental, one thing. Second thing, uh, when you're talking in person to a person, to, to the other one, it will be clearer than when you are communicating 
via mobile or you know video conference calls, Skypes, etc. So mm -hmm. if your pronunciation is not clear and it's acute or having chronic issues with it, then it'll be a problem for the listener. So communication is broken there. See, what is communication when Sarah talks to Hazel and Hazel understands and responds to Sarah, communication is established. So one of the place where the link is broken, the communication is not established. So certain words, I can't remember them. <clears throat> one person was telling uh, that he was an engineer and I am hearing, I'm less, I can hear him say this word as, Engineer, 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 and I was like, "What is that now? Is that a new, fa you know, form of study or something?" And then I had to f ask further questions. Uh, where did you do it? Luckily, the person has done it in uh, one of the famous institutions, and I understood that institution only uh, releases engineers. So I'm sure this was the word. I said, "Did you just say engineer?" Yes, yes. I said, "Okay, okay." Now see, where is it? and there are wrong pronunciations where you land, you the transit from S to sh, mm -hmm. sh, and when you're saying it quickly, what happens is I just cannot make out what you're trying to articulate. Session, yeah. session, division, deserve. So an edge watch. Do you get mm -hmm. it? So when you're using words like that, yeah? and uh, some pronunciations are very curved or concave. Like, you know, yeah. what uh, I said, oh my God, what either it is what or it is what. Yeah. What or what. It is mm -hmm. difficult to comprehend what they're trying to say. Now, mm -hmm. when this happens, what happens is the communication is broken, as I said. Yeah. And uh, ma'am, one thing I have noticed, as you have mentioned, uh, Sha and Sa, the people who are from Uttarakhand, mostly they are facing this issue. They literally blend both the sounds. And I, I do the same thing sometimes, yes. And I've noticed the people who are coming from Bihar, what they do, instead of we, they say be. I have heard instead of vocabulary, they say vocabulary. So a lot of sounds, yeah. Even so, ma'am, can you suggest us uh, if we are um, struggling with certain uh, sounds? So what can we do to improve our pronunciation? You need to ask them to say sir, and then you need to tell them to say sure. Tell them to shadow you. You keep saying sir, 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 session. They'll get it right the first time, the first time, all right? And they need to practice this on their own consciously because there is a sound as sir in practically all of Indian vernacular languages. Sir is also there. I do not know why it has been contaminated with different sounds for some reason. Yes, mm -hmm. mm, there are so many sounds in the sound. It's not just Uttarakhand or Bihar. Trust me, all over India, this problem is there. All over yeah. India. So we get yeah. learners from all over India here. So we all have that. Because, you know, by um, Indian languages are very old, ancient languages. So what happens is it's been in existence for a lot of uh, uh, thousands of years, I must say, because Harappan culture from there down. So we know that civilization there. We God alone knows when it started. All right. So what I'm trying to say is when you continually speak a language, you become so comfortable with it that it sort of sort of glides, glides into the next sound. And that is what happens here. And so they easily take it that jerk can be a sir, no problem, they'll understand. We I will understand. I as an Indian would understand, but a foreign uh, listener would find it difficult to understand. They do not understand that transition or that glide together. Right. Mm -hmm. I know now that uh, they are saying is is, is actually is and was is actually was. Uh, I know, but the foreigner need not know. Yeah. Okay. Well. All That's right. Well, uh, there is one more query, and I've heard a lot of people even uh, when I take session, they ask this only one question: mm -hmm. when they speak. Uh, they're not able to add expressions. Like Internet. when they're happy, they're not able to speak as they're actually happy. Internet. So how to add expressions while speaking? Yes. Intonations. You're talking about intonations, the rise and yes. fall of sound. Mm -hmm. Now, there is something known as rising intonation, falling intonation. If you go and talk to them about this, they will not understand one 
thing that you're trying to say. What you can ask them to do is, of course, I hope you are asking your learners to read a book. So when they're reading a book, what they need to do is they need it, they need to read it loudly. All right. They need to, when there is a comma, tell them that's a short pause. So wait and then start with the next. And if it is um, excitement or exclamatory sentences or imperative sentences like a command, an order, a request, um, an uh, exclamation, an uh, interjection if it is coming in between, like, wow, oh, my God. You don't read it as, wow, I did not expect this. That is a robotic, monotonous, you know, thing. So try to make them understand. You, you express it and show them. This is how you do it. So it would be a good idea to have, to be on the same page, have the same text with your learner so that both of you can see it while you're reading it. They can understand the difference. And mm -hmm. also ask them to record their voice and listen to it one more time. Mm -hmm. They will um, be able to understand. Mm -hmm. And uh, one last thing here. Uh, there's one intonation and voice modulation. What's the slight difference between two? Yeah. Intonation is stressing on each word and sentence. Okay. Mod modulation is modulation is when you're angry, the whole sentence is I sentence is either lifted up or it is dropped. Like when you're sad, uh, you will not be speaking in a very loud sound or voice unless you're in a state of shock or in really a grave bereavement or, to that extent. Mm -hmm. Intonation is stressing on each. How are you? So I just stressed on R. How are you? I just stressed on you. How are you? So do you see? So I stressed on each word separately. That's intonation. Mm -hmm. How are you? That's modulation. He was very angry, so he just muttered, how are you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, how are you? That's medium, right? Do you see the difference? I once or in the, the beginning, I, I nearly screamed out. So probably my friend or listener is somewhere far away. The other time I was not very happy meeting the person, but out of etiquette or courtesy, I asked the question. And so I asked it in a muttering manner. The other one is the person comes in front of me. We are both in a you know, great mood. So we are talking in an ordinary uh, modulated voice. Did you get it? It's a lifting of, yeah. So it depends upon your mood or how you are, or how you're modulated. Mm -hmm. If you're angry, the whole uh, modulation changes, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So maybe we can stress on, uh, on any syllable. Depending and upon what you yes, depending upon. Suppose I, there are five people standing here mm -hmm. and I want to ask A or B or I'm talking to C. How are you doing these days? So I'm not meaning A or B or D. I'm talking to C because I'm looking at the person and I'm saying, how are you doing today? Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So that you is stressed there. How are you? So I've not heard from you for a very long time. And I want to know how you are to get it. So whatever you want to stress is up to you. Uh -huh. and you do do it. You just don't realize you're doing it. Oh, yes. Sir. Because emotions are there and we can say whatever is important. So we just stress. Yes, you. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I'm talking to you. Yes. Yeah. Are we clear now? Yes, ma'am. It is clear. Yeah. That's Great. interesting. Yeah. Actually, your questions were very interesting because when I was in the beginning stage of trying to teach um, spoken English around 15 to 17 years ago, I did not have anyone to help me out here. I was struggling and, you know, lots and lots and loads of research and experience and heartbreaks and scratches and scrapes. And then we have reached here to this level. At oh. least I can give you an answer. Thank God. All right. That's so. Cool. Uh, are so you also long have you been, uh, teaching? How long have you been teaching? 20 years. 20 years. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Do you publish your videos on YouTube as well? Uh, yes, ma'am. I have a YouTube channel. I do publish videos. Yes, uh, on, on, on English sessions? Um, okay, ma'am. I do, but I go solo mostly. I don't go for uh, sessions. But this time I have just <laughs> yeah, decided that I'll go. Yeah. All right, great. I've got some words on the screen here for you. Pronunciation practice. Can we just quickly go through that? Because the session is 
nearing its end. See those words. Can you start reading them? Okay. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to read one by one. Um, yeah. Enough. Yes. Rough. Good. Tough. Superb. No. Excellent. Yeah. Co. Correct. I guess not tough, actually. It's co. If I'm yes. not wrong here. You're absolutely um, correct. Yeah. Plow. Plow. Go. Through. All right. True. So it's, yeah, it's not plow, it's plow. All right. Plow. plow. Yeah. Okay. It's plow. Okay. Owl, I to yeah. It. yeah. Owl sound. Owl sound. Yeah. It's a diphthong there. Second line. Second line. Okay. Here, ma'am, with R, first I want to uh, say one thing. As what I do mostly, uh, as like we speak in Indian or British pronunciation, we use mostly. So I don't pronounce last R's when I speak. Okay. Mm. So I will go in this way. So right. flower, we can say flower as well, but flower, H O U R, our, our, H is silent here, and last time just making it silent, our, not R, and uh, power, power, whether we can say power or power, power, tower, tower or tower, S O U R, sour or sour. You're right. Your landing on the R is absolutely correct. But these are all monosyllabic. It's not disyllabic. Fla, uh -huh. a, pa, ta, sa. Uh -huh. Maybe it's can not... we say fla? Yes, it is. That is the correct pronunciation. It's not flower. Fla, uh -huh. but two syllables. Fla, uh -huh. one syllable. It's all, all these words have only one syllable. Uh -huh. These flowers oh. are good. I love this flower. Uh -huh. At which hour are you expecting your friend? We do not have pa here. This star is very tall. These lemons are very sour. Did you get oh. it? Wow. No. Oh. Pronunciation correct on track. You can choose your accent like you said later on. But okay. pronunciation needs to be correct. That's how it goes. Okay. All right? You gonna... Is it correct? Flower. 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 Can't we say flower? flower. If, you do, if you allow your learner to say that, they will stress on the R and make it a dragged R. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So third, yeah. Could you do the third line as well? Okay. Um, third one, as we say, a line. So I guess it is line. Yes. And it's a line. Super. And it's not determine. I guess it's determine. And last one is divine. Divine. Oh. Okay. It is determine 